I am Dr. Om J. Lakhani. I am a consultant endocrinologist at Zydus Hospital in Ahmedabad. And today I am going to present, uh, give a presentation on alternative medicine in diabetes, time to burst the bubble. Now, this talk was given by me at uh, SpeedCon, uh, a wonderful conference in Delhi in February 2020. And uh, this is how it goes. So this is a real fun presentation and uh, this will talk about uh, s some really serious issues uh, with regards to alternative medicine. However, what I'll do is I try to uh, keep it as much light as possible. And I'll also try to expose some cognitive biases, which we all suffer from, and which often, uh, you know, clouds our judgment uh, in future. Okay, so this is the topic I was given. And when I thought about it a little, I thought, you know, why talk about alternative medicine in diabetes trying to burst the bubble? Why not alternative medicine in diabetes? If you can't beat them, join them. Because very clearly, and I see a lot of diabetes patients every day, a large number of them are either already taking some form of alternative medicine or are, you know, uh, willing or wanting to take some form of alternative medicine. So, you know, instead of trying to uh, beat them or trying to convince a mass population who is not really going to understand it's important why not just join them so this is what my presentation is going to be okay so what i've done is let's start a new startup okay so let let me invent an alternative medicine for diabetes right let's use the model which the previous uh, alternative medicines for diabetes have used so we'll use the same template might as well make some money out of it right so if let's say you are an investor in my company, a simple elevator pitch I'll give you is how I can exploit your cognitive biases to make some money in this time of recession for our country. So let's design a product right now. It could be, let's say, let me call it Dia Ohm, right after me. <laughs> okay. So this is a product. This is a diabetes medicine, alternative medicine, right? It, could be available off the over the counter, which is very strange. Uh, for medicines which have been studied, you need a prescription. For medicines which have never been studied, you can just buy it off the counter, right? Which is very interesting in India, right? So paradox. Anyways, so let me put it as a tagline. The tagline would be rupees five diabetes oshadi, and mind you, I am using the word oshadi, not medicine, with no side effects right so this is my tagline this is what i'm going to put it in 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 large bold fonts in the front of a newspaper okay what are the ingredients so ingredients would be natural and herbal ingredients sourced from the foothills of himalayas basically it could be some masala i would have bought from Kathmandu in my last trip there but you know this is what i'll put it as and you know when i put an ad or i put a leaflet I'll say 99% of patients on diome have no major side effects, while thousands of patients on modern medicine suffer from major side effects. So this is what I'm going to put as, as you know, uh, 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 a sort of a pitch to my people and basically to contrast that, look, my medicine has no side effects and look, the medicines you're taking, which your doctor has prescribed to you has a lot of side effects. Okay. so. What are the biases I'm going to exploit? Now, the first is rupees five, which is what is known as anchoring bias. Uh, then there is the word Oshadi, which is a form of confirmation bias. And we'll discuss all these biases as we go along. And no side effects is a form of loss aversion. So these are the things we'll exploit. Again, to say that natural and herbal ingredients sourced from foothills of Himalayas uh, pays to a confirmation bias or a congruence bias and to frame this entire thing as dia ohm or my medicine versus your medicine is a form of framing bias so this is what we'll again look at so first look at what is anchoring effect right so anchoring effect is a very uh, you know well-known uh, cognitive bias which is often used in case of negotiations or, or you know, uh, so if you've ever been to Palika Bazaar in, in uh, you know, uh, New Delhi, you will find a lot of uh, anchoring effect 
taking place right so let's say you go to buy a new t-shirt or let's say you go to buy a new product in from the industry and it says that the product costs you 290 dollars right now let's say a new mobile phone let's say it costs 20,000 rupees now you don't know you know whether to how to see this right so if i give you another perspective let's say that you know it used to cost let's say new one plus 70 costs used to cost 45,000 rupees and Amazon is giving it to you a discount of uh, let's say 30,000 rupees right so 45,000 cross 30,000 right and this is this is the last day for sale so you know what you have done is what I've done is effectively is that anchor you to the price of the product at, at 45,000 but said that I'm giving it to you at 30,000 you say okay that seems to be a good bargain this is a product worth 45,000 I'm getting it for 30,000, right? So this is a typical anchoring effect. The same thing happens when you are negotiating. So let's say I go to buy a t-shirt. The guy says, you know, uh, I'll give it for 300 bucks. I said, no, give it to me for 200 bucks, right? So what he's done is he has effectively anchored a number. And now I'm negotiating around that number, right? I'm not negotiating two way. I'm not going to say, give this to me for 50 rupees because, you know, it. that's a big difference because he's anchored it at 300. I'm not going to say 50, right? So that's the beauty of this. So this is what, you know, uh, a CSIR has done with that product, very famous one, BGR 34. And this was a tagline. Uh, and this was seen in the newspaper. This is Times of India. CSIR launches an Ayurvedic medicine for rupees five per tablet, right? This is the tagline, right? So what they've done is they've anchored it to rupees five per tablet. Now, the dose of BGR, very interestingly, is twice or thrice a day, which makes this as 10 to 15 rupees per day which is a very interesting thing right so this is a tablet which is available it costs you 10 to 15 rupees a day but they anchored it to a rupees 5 tablet a day now it claims to be a natural dpp4 inhibitor if you read more about it but what is very interesting is that a generic original dpp4 not a natural one right an artificial one uh, DPP-4 inhibitor, let's say tenalegliptin, cost about six to nine rupees a day. So this is very interesting. So the, the alternative medicine cost ten to fifteen rupees. The proper medicine cost six to nine rupees, which is very interesting, right? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll anchor this, right? So I, I know this bias now. So I'll say tenalegliptin, which is an artificial DPP-4 inhibitor, which will cost you six rupees a day, versus diorium which is a natural DPP-4 inhibitor will cost you 3 rupees a day, right? So you'll see, clearly see, yeah, my price is half the cheapest DPP-4 inhibitor. I'm getting it something cheaper than that, right? Why not? So this is the bias, but what I forgot to tell you is that it has to be taken four times a day. So it will cost you effectively 12 rupees a day, but this is not what you see when you go to buy the medicine. The second form of bias, which is very, very, very common is confirmation bias. Now, confirmation bias we see every single day. Just open your Twitter and 90% of the stuff you read is confirmation bias. And in fact, so, you know, this is what, you know, companies like Cambridge Analytica and all this has been exploiting, right? That you, let's say you're inclined towards a particular political party, you'll only find information which pertains to that political party or that confirms to your belief. That is confirmation bias. Now, what happens in India is, Basically, confirmation bias is when people would like a certain idea or concept to be true, end up believing it to be true. So if you think it is true, you probably will end up believing it to be true. And what is the strange part is that even if you get evidence against this, so if you're a fan of, uh, you know, alternative medicine, and if, if I'm giving you evidence against this today, you'll probably feel that all these things is nonsense. You'll actually end up believing more in your original belief rather than trying to disprove it. This is the strange part of confirmation bias, right? So how does BGR34 exploit this? So this is a YouTube uh, video. Scientifically validated rupees 5 anti-diabetes herbal drug launched by CSI, right? What's the interesting thing? Scientifically validated. This is a confirmation bias which they're trying to produce, which is very interesting. I'll just exploit that. What is the data that we have in BGR34? How do you say it is scientifically validated? Now, I looked on the internet, I searched PubMed and actually found one PubMed index, uh, index article. Just one study is conducted in 64 patients of which 32 received the active drug BGR34. 
32 received placebo, right? This is the study, right? So this is a study published PubMed index given, right? Trial was published in 2018, right? Uh, just a few years back. Uh, so this is the study. It seems that you just need one 32 patient study to say that this medicine is better than all the previous diabetes medicine that has ever been. That's the confirmation bias. I mean, that's so strange, right? And what is very interesting is that Narendra Modi, the beloved prime minister himself, probably the king of confirmation biases, uh, puts this up saying that, you know, it, BGR 34 should be given a technological award, actually praises this on, on stage. Do you find how strange this is, right? This is so strange. Uh, you have a study of 32 patients and you say that everything, every other drug before that is worse than what this is. I and mean, this is very, very, very strange. So basically, to launch Dio, I need to get hold of probably Amit Shah, not Narendra Modi, because I think it's Amit Shah's day these days. I can ask him to uh, go on stage and basically just basically have one study of 30, 60 participants. Eh? Very easy to do, right? Uh, you know, to show that benefit versus placebo, I can then market it as a miracle cure for diabetes. Just 30 to 60 patients, not much of an investment required, okay? And the people will believe it because it's an Ayurvedic Aushadi and Ayurvedic Aushadis are all good. It doesn't have any side effects. It is, you know, what your ancestors used to use, right? Uh, so, you know, it's safe. Okay. Then the third important bias which we have is what is known as loss aversion. And this is... Uh, uh, this particular bias is not seen with everyone, right? So, uh, you know, this is something which is very specific to certain kind of people. Uh, for example, let me give you a finance example of this, right? Now, let's say, uh, you know, if, if somebody tells you to invest in equity, right? Now, my father uh, always used to tell me when I was growing up, never put your money in shares, never put your money in shares, you'll always lose money. Right. Uh, I said, why not mutual funds? I said, don't put your money in mutual funds. They basically put money in shares. So he had a loss aversion. Right. He would always put his money uh, in, in debt instruments or, or you know, fixed deposits. Right. Uh, he still has. And, and you know, uh, uh, that's the thing. So a large cap equity mutual fund would give you about 10 to 12 percent annualized return. But if you read the prospects very carefully, it will say that there is a potential risk of losing all your principal amount, right? That's the 0.1 pencil. Versus fixed deposits give you 6 to 7% annualized return, but you have a 0.01% risk of losing all your principal amount. So uh, mutual funds are 10 times more risky, but probably give you only twice the, you know, return, right? So, you know, why should you invest in mutual fund? So it depends on you, right? Are you willing to take risk or are you averse to losses, right? This is the important thing. What would you choose? Remember, inflation is 8 to 9% per year. So essentially, by putting your money in fixed deposit, you're guaranteed losing 1 to 2% of your capital every year, which is a very interesting thing. This you do not consider. Also remember, economists call something known as opportunity cost. So what you're doing is by losing, uh, by putting your money in fixed deposit instead of equity, you are there is a difference which is there. If you'd have invested that money in equity, you would have got more returns and that would have been compounded, right? So you actually lose money through opportunity cost, right? The interesting thing is, when you talk about loss aversion, a lot of our patients have this, right? So they say that, you know, uh, it's fine if my diabetes is not controlled, but the medicine should not cause any side effect, which is so strange, right? And if you see reviews of BGI 34, this is something very funny I found actually while going through. I, I don't trust all these things, but basically, you know, look at this interesting review somebody has put, right? They say that, guy says that, you know, I tried this and so on and so forth. The result was not satisfactory. There were some serious side effects with BGI 34. So it's like, you know, you're trying to avoid side effect from modern medicine and it turned out to have some serious side effects with BGI 34. And actually says that, you know, what happened to me was my blood sugar became worse after taking BGR 34, which is basically opportunity cost. And remember, let me tell you this. So this is like this. You put your money in fixed deposit and I put my money in mutual fund. Now I got 10% return, but you put your money in PMC bank or our yes bank and the banks actually are close to closing down. So actually you lost your capital. I 
retained mind right so you never know it's luck by chance so modern medicines may have more documented side effects but the benefit far outweighs the side effects and this is the principle uh, of which modern medicine is based on alternative medicines on the other hand may have less documented side effects but they, do you have enough data for the same and here is one more bias right and this is what uh, you know the famous uh, uh, you know psychologist uh, daniel kahneman nobel prize winning side and if you have not read this book i i i you know suggest you read this uh, this book is known as thinking fast and slow it's a brilliant book and in this book uh, daniel kahneman very repeatedly see, says something known as viciety viciety is what you see is all there is we only believe things that we see we don't believe things which we do not see right that's the strange part what you see is all there is now if you are a fan of uh, watching movies there is a wonderful movie known as aankho dekhi and i would I, you know suggest you to see this and there's this uh, elderly guy uh, who in you know at fag end of his life decide that i am only going to believe things which i see i am not going to believe things which i don't see so you know Uh, for example if you know somebody told him that a tiger is very ferocious he doesn't believe it he said i have not seen a tiger so he goes to the zoo to actually see a tiger and actually believe and actually experience the fact that you know he's ferocious so this is the thing about uh, alternative medicines right that because you have not seen the side effects you believe they don't exist which is unfortunately not true what about and you know what we don't factor in is that if you are taking an ineffective uh, molecule uh there is an opportunity cost right the time you spend on it with an ineffective medicine which you could have spent with the effective modern medicine you are losing that time for good glycemic control that's a strange part also remember and this is where the pmc and you know yes bank kind of issues come into picture remember that unfortunately right these drugs you know may have very serious side effects for example if you see this uh, articles from world journal of hepatology and various other hepatology journals are with the drug induced liver injury uh, herb induced liver injury in developing nations these are all review articles lot of editorials so editorial in in uh, you know indian journal of gastroenterology ayurvedic and herbal medicine induced liver injury time to wake up and take notice and also herbal med- metal contamination in ayurvedic medicine has been widely reported it is very clear that our patients have a risk aversion but they don't realize what the risk they are having right and i would rather take medicines with no known side effect and not no published side effect this is what our patients believe rather than take medicines with well known side effects and well documented but rare side effects so this is what uh, and also you know there's something form of a uh, another form of bias which is there which is known as exposure suspicion bias or diagnostic suspicion bias and this you know doctors also often uh, experience uh, for example you know this this deals with something for example a pathologist knows that a patient is alcoholic is more likely to give a borderline liver specimen as alcoholic cirrhosis right the same way if a patient or doctor knows the side effect of the medication is more likely to attribute the side effect to the medication and this is the interesting thing right uh, but if you don't know the side effect what then then you don't know what's happening and this is what really happens so also we we have a neglect of probability that is you know we neglect uh, uh, it's a form of po- po- cognitive bias where we disregard po- probability while making a decision for example small risks are often neglected entirely or usually overrated so that small risk of having uh, you know a, a, a very rare side effect uh, you know a, with sglt2 inhibitor is is often uh, blown out of proportion or a small side effect of having uh, you know pancreatitis with with uh, you know dpp4 inhibitors is blown out of proportion versus the benefits it can have in thousands of patients then you have finally the framing bias and this is like saying is a glass half full or a glass half empty and it depends on your choices are influenced by the frame you put in you know a, a picture is is not just a picture it's also the frame associated with that so what kind of frame you put it uh, based on that it will sh- it will show whether your picture is really you know a piece of modern art or it is a contemporary art and so on and so forth right so let's say for example uh, you know if if there is a medical procedure which uh, is being done if i say that of 100 patients 90 will be alive after 5 years you are more likely to accept that procedure versus if i say 
that out of 100 patients, 10 will be dead after five years, right? So if you give a positive frame, a gain frame, you're more likely to accept it versus a loss frame where you're more likely to reject it, right? So alternative medicine practitioners often give a loss frame to modern medicine saying that, you know, uh, one in 100 will have uh, UTI. Now, fine, it's happened, but what about the 99 who do not have UTI and, and have reduced risk of heart failure, right? What about them? And this is what something which I read on a blog on homeopathic medicine, right? So homeopathic medicines have no side effect. The guy claims allopathic practitioners are limited by what they can do because they can only focus on symptoms, not the causes, which is very strange because this is completely not true. This is exactly opposite of what the reality is. In fact, if you see this, you know, very interesting paper by uh, our speed group, uh, you know, use of metformin, SGLT2 and GLP receptor agonist in treatment of diabetes mellitus, what they found was that, you know, uh, one or more of these medications produce 7 kg weight loss in the diabetic patients. We all know that, you know, weight loss is actually treating the underlying uh, etiology, reducing the insulin resistance. Uh, and this is what modern medicines do. Versus if you see the data from BGR34, it produced no weight loss in its preclinical and clinical study. So, you know, what's really treating the symptoms? And what's really treating the cause, right? That you can clearly judge for yourself. In fact, now, since BGR produces no weight loss, how they framed it, you know, very interesting, read this. Uh, the test drug administration showed significant increase in body weight in test rats, which is very interesting. But they framed this as, as BGR34 administration has no adverse effect like body weight loss in experimental rats. Hence, it was found to be safe for human use, which is very strange. Now, if it does not produce weight loss, so... You know, it is not, it's not an ad, having an adverse effect of weight. Now, in fact, weight loss is not an adverse effect in diabetes. A weight loss is a, you know, intended benefit in this, right? So, again, for mutual fund, you know, if you really want to sell mutual fund, what do you say? Advertising 101, mutual fund achhe hai, right? So, you frame it in a positive way, gain frame. Again, you have survivorship bias, which is basically, you know, we often... Uh, you know, attribute things to survivors. So it's a survival bias is logical error of concentrating of people who have made it past the selection process and overlooking those who did not. For example, if you see any, uh, I'm just giving example of this. If you see any, any coaching institute, they'll show you photos of people who had first rank and second rank and third rank and so on and so forth. What about the hundreds who did not even cross the screening exam, right? So this is survivorship bias, right? So these guys, who have got good ranks will go and then pitch it to people other people that look i got a great rank and you should also join these classes versus you know what about the people who did not they'll not say anything right remember a book broken clock is also right twice in a day so this is what happens with alternative medicines there are they are always propagated by a small people who benefited it by from it by most likely by chance and thousands who did not right and this is classical survivorship bias so let me just summarize some take home messages. I just want to say this. I read this on Twitter, which is great. If alternative medicines were effective and safe, they would be called medicines and not alternative medicines, right? And alternative medicines take advantage of the human cognitive bias to sell something which could be either the best thing ever or could potentially kill you. Unfortunately, you would never know. Thank you.